So I'm kind of in a weird position. So I just took the July LSAT, um, having studied for a year <laughs> prior to it. Um, I scored a 159. I typically get around a 166 when I'm doing a practice test. Um, was shooting for like, you know, 170s hopefully when I was studying. Um, but now I'm kind of like, I don't know if it was the fact that it was a stressful day that messed it up. I don't get to see my scores because it was a non-disclosed. Um, so kind of how to regroup for the October one and kind of like knowing that the logical reasoning is the section that if I'm going to mess up on is typically the one that I do, kind of just trying to schedule kind of a new study plan to fix those areas. Sure. Okay, so what would your default be if we didn't have this call tonight and you've got about two months until October, what would you be doing? I'd probably be going to Khan Academy and picking one kind of each question section that they have and trying to work through them and see which ones I'm actually like screwing up on the most and trying to do that and then just taking a bunch more practice tests just to kind of get the nerves out if that's what it was. Okay, and so what don't you like about that approach? It seems too similar to what I was already doing. <laughs> so what do you think is missing then? I think that's why I'm kind of here. I'm a little bit lost with it. Um, I was kind of freaked out by how that test went just because I can't see what I did. I don't know if it was just like a bad day. So that kind of causes a lot more anxiety about it than normally being like, okay, you screwed up on this section and this was the section that you messed up on the most because then it's easier to go and say, okay, I need to fix that. Um, but in this situation, it's more, okay, I don't know what I did. I don't know, you know, what I kind of need to work on more. Because to be honest, my, if I look at kind of what I typically miss versus what I typically get right um, in logical reasoning, it kind of is, I found more depends on the question itself rather than the type. I'll just miss some rather than others, so. Yeah, it's not always about question types. Sometimes, sometimes you get things wrong just because they're difficult. Right. Down to a certain point, once you've got the fundamentals down, you may not always have a particular weak area, or you may get more flaw questions wrong because there are a lot of them to get wrong, not because you have a particular weak area in flaw questions. Now, it's obviously also frustrating when tests are undisclosed because you can't see your results. You can't know what you got right or, or what you got wrong. And obviously, after a few weeks, everything's kind of hazy anyway. So in the absence of that, how might you determine your weak areas without that disclosed exam? I think again, back to just going to Khan Academy and like going through their sections that are specific types and seeing, kind of comparing them and seeing if I'm messing up more than others. Um, I don't really have an idea after that. Yeah. I mean, you could use analytics from a place like Khan Academy. You could do another timed exam or two. Right. A timed exam that you do today is also a decent sample. I mean, it's one exam, just like the test that you took. The official one was also just one exam. So it's obviously limited in sample size. So you could do five if you wanted to, and then average and see where you stand and then see what are there, where are there any trends, if any. But as you said, also question type analysis is only one piece of the puzzle. It could be the method of reasoning in a stimulus. Right. So in the absence of trends with regard to question type, what if you just took a handful of exams and reviewed them in depth? What if you did like one or two a week between now and October? Um, I think that would probably help because doing more in general typically gives you at least something to look at and kind of more confidence in knowing something about it. I think my issue is the fact that I just don't um, know what I was messing up on. So probably good. Is there anything missing from that approach for you? I mean, there's always the option of it being, you know, they are random. So if it doesn't have the kind of question I was messing up on, there might be some discrepancy to what I would end up focusing on. So. Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, if you do two a week though, You'll yeah. be covering a decent number. You know, maybe evaluate the argument questions only come up once in a blue moon, so you won't encounter too many of those. But 
they're also quite rare anyway. And the good news is that for a question type like that, again, it's not all about question type, first of all. So methods of reasoning span a wide variety of question types. And that one in particular straddles the line between strengthen and weaken. So if you do strengthen and weaken, you'll get better at evaluate at the same time. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.